when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is if I've remembered, you should be watching me in black and white right now. And this is, of course, 4F Beauty. This is another one of my Zodiac films. Come on, you must know it by now. Sing it with me. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Today, we are talking about the planets of the Zodiac. Most specifically focusing on Pisces. So, if you want to find out exactly which planet rules Pisces, what its traits are, and what its colour scheme is, i.e. what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then as I have said for some time and oft here echoed elsewhere, but do they have a sloth straw? I don't think so. Mm -mm. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Okay. I will have told you in the intro that we are in another Zodiac film. No doubt I will have sung at you again. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning and this is film number 2 that I'm recording. Hence why I'm a little pink because I've just taken everything off. Um, I've been using this recently and my skin is loving it. This is the um, Revolution Super Fruit Extract Antioxidant Rich Serum and Primer. Really, my skin's really been liking this. Because um, I moisturise and then I tit about for quite a bit, let that soak in. But then that, as well as priming just gives you that little hint of extra moisture as well which although I've got oily combo skin it's really nice it really feels like it's plumping that's a really really bad image isn't it I should stop right so we are talking about the planet associated with Pisces which is Neptune Here's your picture. As you can see, Neptune is blue, but a darker blue than Uranus or Uranus, depending on how much of a child you feel like being. So I am yet to use this. Picked it up cheap from someone who was selling it off. He bought it and then just wasn't inspired by it. Can't think why. So I actually got this for, I think I paid 30 quid for it, all told, good postage. Which is better than the 70 quid that Anastasia wanted. I'm sorry, 70 quid for this, behave. Um, but you can see there's a nice lot of blues in here that I can call upon to create a lovely look, hopefully. Now... As ever, this remains a teaching channel, so that combined with my chronic pain means I'm not going to be blending at super fast speed. But I also, I leave the blending and everything in so that you have an indication of how long the eye look will actually take to create. It's no good watching a 20 minute tutorial if the eye look's going to take you 45 minutes. Because then when you're trying to get yourself sorted to go out, you're going to be, okay, 20 minute eye look, this would be good. 
and after 20 minutes you've got maybe one eye done or half of both eyes done it's just it's not helpful um, I do zoom in very very close so you can see exactly what's going on I don't just zoom into here so you can sort of my decolletage um, no I, I zoom in so you can see even if you watch me on a phone screen you can see what's going on if I'm going too slowly for you, because I do speak quite slowly, it's, I always have done. I got told off as a kid for talking too quickly and not being able to be understood, so now I think I've gone the opposite way completely. Plus, I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire. The faster I talk, the thicker my accents get, the more difficult I am to understand. There's a speed widget up there. Feel free to use it. Now, um, I've got deep set eyes. I've also got grey hair. Just, can you see? You probably can't see that. Um, I've got deep set eyes, but a lot of people, including big booty gurus, um, say they've got hooded lids when they actually have deep set eyes. Um, during one of my painsomnia moments of researching different eye shapes so that I can give better advice for people who have different eye shapes to myself I realised I don't have hooded lids, I have deep set eyes so since then I've tried to insert into every one of my tutorials some advice on how to work out which eye shape you have and what the workarounds are for them because although they have the same issues in terms of how eyeshadow performs and how it wears through the day. They are two very different eye shapes. They do have two very different workarounds. So, um, in just a minute, I'll insert a clip. It will be very up close and personal. Once the clip is done, I'll be back with this to pop some colour onto my eyelids. Um, the main part of the film, the tutorial, remains about the makeup. At the end of the film, I'll tell you a little bit more about Neptune. Alrighty, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. 
with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, and I am back. Right, okay. I'm going to start off with a Morphe M139, which is, I always call these tulip brushes. I think they're tapered blenders. Mm. And I'm going to start off with, how bright do I want to start? That's a stupid question. Right, I'm going to start off with, actually Neptune's quite dark, isn't it? I think I'll start off with C3. Um, just like Anastasia's other formula, the Norvina is quite kick-uppy, if you can see there. Doesn't worry me, I just leave the kick-up on the top of the pan, because I can pick it up next time round when I'm adding additional colour. Right, always hold the brush right at the very, very end. No, I haven't been to a nail salon, I did them myself, but... I do need to do an infill because I didn't do it thick enough at the cuticle and it did chip off in the shower. Right, what I'm going to do now is the Viennese Waltz of blending. Bear with. Basically, natural turns to the middle, a fleckle and reverse turns coming back out again. The reason I do this is I'm 46 years old, I've lost 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds and uh, basically the skin on my eyelids moves. This side is worse, you can see the super deep creasing here from when my eye was pulled around as a kid at the ophthalmic hospital. So, by doing the circular movements we are very gently moving the skin on our eyelids around so that we don't end up with tiger striping which I'm sure would disappoint Joe Exotic, but never mind. Um, but I know, you know, 20 year olds have always been slim that have looser eyelids as well. And this is just a way of ensuring that you get a nicely blended look with as few gaps as possible without pulling your eyelid around too much. Okay. Always start off with the brush on the outer edge because if you do suddenly get a plump of um, pigment. It's much easier to blend it out from over here than it is when you get over there and your nose is in the way. Yes, there's fallout. No, I'm not bothered. I do my base 
afterwards. And I did tap a lot of this off anyway, because I know how dusty Anastasia pigments can be. So this is pretty much the first time I'm using this. So it'll be interesting to see what my thoughts are because obviously blues, greens and purples are the most difficult colours to create so of course they are my favourite shades in a palette. So it'll be interesting to see just how well they blend out or not. This is blending on quite nicely at the moment. As I said, a fair amount of fallout, but you can't expect that, unfortunately. That's why I prefer to do... I used to be the sort of person that did my base first and just put a load of powder down to catch any fallout. But that, darlings, is the equivalent of baking, which... As soon as you're the right side of 35, the only baking you should do involves the kitchen. So, get this nicely blended out. I like that. So, how's your day been so far? Is it a good one for you at the start of your day? Are you watching me over your brekkie? If you are, what are you having? Cornflakes? Toast? Oatmeal? Pancakes? I had a bagel. Toasted bagel. A little bit of cheese. It just starts my day off nicely. The, uh, the carbohydrate in the bagel helps settle my stomach because I'd always found it very very difficult to eat first thing in the mornings. I used to have to be up for a good two or three hours before I could eat. But because I have to take pain meds and because I find that if I take them on an empty stomach it makes me throw up. The sooner I eat, the sooner I can take my pain pills. So, I find that the, the carb dense bagel helps with settling my stomach. And the little bit of cheese that I have on it is just enough fat to help protect my stomach along with my omeprazole to help prevent ulcers. <sighs> you don't have to dust fall out away, I just know that when I'm editing that will drive me crack as if I don't. Okay, so that's quite a dark blue and that has blended out quite nicely. A little bit of patching in the viewfinder just here but in real life it's not there, so I'm hoping it's just the limitations of my viewfinder. Because I find that where I film in HD, I'll say, oh that looks patchy on there, but it doesn't in real life. And then when I'm editing it, you can't see the patchiness anyway. I look like a fool, like a damn fool. Right, just cleaned that off on a microfiber cloth because... I used to use colour switches but they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially when using natural hair. That wasn't, that was a synthetic, but right, this is one of my Blush Tribe brushes. It's clean, it's just stained. And I am now going to go into, is B2 going to be too, yeah that's going to be too close in time I think. Just wipe it off on my leg. I've got shorter shorts on than usual. Hmm. That one could work. Yeah, that one I think. Oh, I'm tempted by that one though. Why 
be a little bit bright, but I'm super tempted by it. Right, I'm going to start off with B4 and blend it with B5. So I'm going to, those last two shades that I showed you, I'm going to basically dip into both shadows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap the deeper blue and just blend along the edge. Just to soften that edge off and to add a bit of a gradient so it lightens up a little bit as we come up towards the brow. I could have just used B4 on its own but I wanted to add a little bit more brightness against this deeper blue which is why I've dipped into B5 as well. If you're at the end of your day, I hope it was a good one. And if it was shite, I hope tomorrow's better. We've, um, our government has decided to confuse the whole system now. It was stay at home, protect the NHS, save lives, etc. And now it's stay alert! Because we can now... We can go out more than once a day for exercise and we're now allowed to sit in parks rather than just walk around in them but still keeping social distancing and only being closer to people that are in our household. I just worry that we're going to end up with a huge spike on the infection rate. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Scotland's still staying quite firm with theirs, so is Wales. I'm not sure about Northern Ireland, I've not seen what they're doing yet. But it's just... I get that we need to get things open back up for the economy. But there's no point having an economy if there's nobody to run it, because everybody's half dead. You know, I've got a friend who's got this and she was, she had no underlying health conditions prior to catching it. And she's around my age, so not old. Um, and it's really knocked her for six. She's been, the first two weeks she could barely even get out of bed to go to the loo. Um, she can now get up and sort of sit in the chair for a few hours at a time, but she's just, it's, it's absolutely wiped her out, you know, and it does worry me if we open up too soon, but anyway, enough about that, let's keep this about the makeup. That being said, if you do want to have a chat, if you are feeling a bit blur. Feel free to drop a comment because I do try and respond to all of the comments on my films. Okay, those blues are blended out really nicely as well. I keep sitting back and checking that both eyes are the same because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck, I don't photoshop my results, what you see is what you get. Which means what you get is achievable. That's nice. Like that. Like that a lot. Let's clean the brush off. And I think I'm going to go into a deeper shade just for this outer corner here. So I'm going to go into D5. It's weird, when I first saw these Norvina palettes, I was initially drawn to the first one, the purple one. But then when Jeffrey released Bloodlust, I'm like, well, 
given the choice of the two, I'm going to choose Bloodlust because I prefer Jeffrey's formula. So, right, with this, I'm literally just going halfway along to concentrate it on the outer edge here. And then, whatever's left, gently windscreen wiper that across. That's my eye watering. Unfortunately, folks, there's not much I can do about that. I will try and sort the issue. But I've always had watery eyes, and you add fibro in and hay fever, and unfortunately, you end up with runny eyes. So, pop a little bit of this on the outer edge here. Hmm, I like this. Yeah, originally I was drawn to the purple one. But I'm like, I'm not paying 70 quid. Because these are like, I think they're 68 quid over here. And I'm like, no, mm -mm, I ain't paying that much. So, but then this came up on Depop where someone had bought it and then I'd looked at it for a couple of months and just hadn't got any inspiration from it. So we're selling it. Okay. I'll add me some of that. I quite like the third one as well, the orange one. But I am much more uh, a blue tone, you know, blue, green and purple girl. I'm dragging this out beyond my eye here. I'm going to tidy those up with micellar water when I um, put my foundation and stuff on. It's just because my eyes are so watery, I just want to carry it on a little bit further just to make sure that we've got coverage, you know. I do like a nice, good, deep, grungy look. Right, now I'm going to use a Jeffrey lip brush, Jeffrey Morphe lip brush. This is the JS24. But I like this because where it's got the point you can get right into the corner there. And I'm going to go into D1. Which is um, almost a teal shimmer rather than a blue shimmer. There isn't really a, a true blue shimmer in here. You've got a pink shimmer, a lime one. A uh, sort of gunmetally grey one, a green one, this one, and a gold one. That's about it. Okay, and I'm going to just wet the brush. Come on, there you go. I'm just using the cucumber fixing spray from Revolution. You can use whatever you like, you don't have to use fixing spray, you can just use clean water, just so long as. You don't put a wet brush into a fixed pigment. Right, I'm going to pop this like so. See if I can cover that bit where my eye was watering. I'm just going to drag that across the two thirds of the lid so far haven't had any pigment on it. Then use the tip of the bristles just to buff it into that deeper matte pigment at the end there. 
dry the brush off before going back into that pigment. Yeah, you should never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will kill the pigment. And this is already starting to go a little bit shiny hard pan. You can still pick pigment up but it's obviously got a very high um, oil content in it. Now with this side, because of the deep creasing, I do have to do it a little bit differently. I actually have to stretch the lid out. Um, let me show you the technique that I use. I literally put my finger just to the side of where the creasing is and only stretch the lid out as far as I need to. Because the problem is if I don't do this and just put it on like I did with the other eye, instead of being blended neatly onto the lid like this, it ends up packing loosely into that creasing and then it, as it dries it ends up falling in my eye and down my face during the day which really hurts. But you can see I literally only pulled the part of lid that had the deep creasing on. I only pulled it out far enough to straighten the creases out, I didn't pull it right out to my ear roll. And as soon as I was done, I let go. But obviously, if you can get away without doing that, then please don't do that. Just grab a wee bit of extra pigment just for there. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I tidy these edges up with some micellar water and bung some base products on and uh, then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait until I press record to talk to you again, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Alrighty, I am back. I am proper struggling with this eye, as you can tell. So you're going to have to forgive me with this side. It's really not playing ball. Um, brows, I just did my usual soap brow and then went over it with shade B2 with this brush. Um, I use the Revolution Soap Brow Kit just because I like the shape of the little toothbrush shaped Good lord, that's difficult to say. Um, that's in there, but you can just use spoolie on your brow brush. Um, I don't wet the soap, uh, I leave it dry, and then by putting the coloured powder on afterwards, or the eyeshadow, it sets the brows in place um, and it also gives something for the powder to cling onto. Right. Going in with this flat top brush into D5. And we're going to very carefully run this along the lower lash line. As you can tell, I struggle with uh, watery eyes. Add to that fibro, add to that hay fever, and struggle bus is an understatement. As you can see, I'm leaking here and I'm leaking here. Um, but I need to get these films recorded. And this isn't because I'd filmed one look and taken it all off and started again, it's been doing it all day. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, which I happen to really love. It's great, flat topped but chunky, so it's great for blending out. Um, and I'm going to dip into B4, which is the one that I used in combination with B5 to do this shade. But it's the slightly less bright of the two. I'm just going to use that to buff that lower lash line out, 
just to give it a little bit of interest there because obviously I don't put anything in my waterline. I think we can I think we can see why, don't you? Like so. Let's just close that North Vena palette. And then I think I'm going to try this Heartbreakers Unique using the white at the side. Revolution. This is just a really cheap um, lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago now. Just pop some of this under the toe of my brow because apparently folks, along with everything else, gravity drags their brows down. Ain't that lovely? And pop some on the inner corner here. How long it will last for? God only knows. Run it under the tear duct and blend it into the colour. Underneath the eye, as I always do, you can just leave it to the inner corner like that, but I just find it finishes my look off nicely if I just blend that down slightly. I just prefer how that looks. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you for one last time, do some more battling with that. Chuck some highlight everywhere, put some mascara on, put some lippy on, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look and more information on the planet. I am back. I used a combination of the white and the pink on my face for the highlight. I used my Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof Mascara for obvious reasons. Uh, this is a dupe of the Benefit Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. But it produces the exact same look for a much better price. And the lipstick is my ASM Artistry Lippy. What do we think? Here's the planet, and here's my interpretation of it, even though my runny eyes have been determined to try and ruin the look. What do you think? Right, so to tell you a little bit more about Neptune, the, uh, the traits associated with Neptune and therefore associated with Pisces are compassion, creativity and believe it or not psychic powers also dreams, visions, art, healing, illusion and alchemy. It's interesting that healing and compassion are both in there because Pisces are a compassionate breed of people. You very often will find members of the caring profession, nurses, carers, doctors, etc., will be a Pisces. And in fact, my mother-in-law, who has been a nurse for many, many years now, is a Pisces. So, there's your Neptune. There's a little bit of information about it. And here is your finished eye look using this. So far, quite impressed. Want to play with some more colours. And will do very soon, no doubt. Right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but cheekily they are leaving me in your newsfeed, so it's not obvious that you have been unsubbed. Um, so please check your subscription status and check your notifications at the same time. Once you have done that, 
be awesome if you could give this film a thumbs up for me. It really helps with the algorithm and getting it pushed out to other people. And maybe even leave me a comment or two in the comments box. As I said earlier, I do try and respond to all of the comments that I get. If you are new here, however, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing you enjoyed something, even if it was the struggle of me trying to get eyeshadow to stay on a, a very, very watery pair of eyes today. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the friendliest family on YouTube, which is the U4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey, then you ring the notification bell. Say yes, however many times YouTube are currently asking you to say yes. And when you say you want all notifications, they'll probably tell you, oh, I don't know, one in four of my films that go up. Seems to be the current rate. But, speaking of other films that I have, there are an awful lot you can choose from already to see. It's very, very simple, and as I have said for some considerable time now, but today I'm accompanied by a sloth straw. Oh yes! <laughs> I've lost my mind. Uh, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. Right, my lovelies, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.